everybody. I'm about to start my first legitimate tie-dye project and some of you have expressed interest in seeing some videos just kind of going over the different steps um, of the process. So that's what we're doing here. This is just going to show you the supplies that you need if you're mixing your own dye. So if you're just getting started with tie-dye and you go to a craft store and you buy a tie-dye kit, it's going to come with um, some bottles and in those bottles there's going to be some powder and you just mix it with water and it creates the colors that you need for tie dyeing. When you're tie dyeing there are three primary colors that you're working with. Yellow, magenta, and cyan. Um, magenta is sometimes called fuchsia, cyan is sometimes called turquoise. Those are the three primary colors for tie dye. If you have those three colors you can mix them together and make other colors like orange, green, purple, um, different shades. So um, as long as you have those three primary colors, that's a really good starting point. Or if you're tie dyeing on a budget and you don't wanna order colors in specific shades, you can just start with the three primary colors and go from there. So that's what I did. I went to a company called Dharma Trading Company and I ordered dye powder in the three primary colors. So I got some yellow, some turquoise, some magenta, and I also ordered some black powder, which I'll be using on future projects. Uh, probably won't be using that today, but that's what you see here are the, the dye powders in the three primary colors in black. I ordered this color wheel um, because it is just gonna be a great resource when I start mixing colors. Um, so that I know how much of the primary colors to use to get other colors. So I'll get into that a little bit more um, either later today or in a future video. These big bottles here are the ones that came with the kits that I bought a couple of weeks ago. I just washed them out and saved them so that I would have them to mix up dye in today. These medium bottles I also bought when I bought the kits um, and I just saved them because you can never have too many bottles when you're mixing colors. You want to have plenty of bottles for the different colors that you mix up. And then these, um, these fine tip bottles I bought from Dharma. I'm gonna be using these to apply fine lines of color um, in between other colors. So if you have colors that you wanna put next to each other on a project, but you don't want them to mix together, you can pick a neutral color and put a fine line of that down in between them and that'll keep those colors from mixing and getting muddled and um, I'll explain that a little bit more later. So um, that's what these are for. The measuring spoons and the funnels are just for measuring out the dye powder and getting it into the bottles. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna mix up some dye and uh, get started. Okay, I have finished mixing my three primary colors. Uh, I've got my magenta, my turquoise, and my yellow mixed. It is messy work. Uh, the, the powder is very fine, so it kind of gets everywhere. Um, you, can, you can see my paper towel has already got, just from the powder being on it and water getting on it. Um, so it's messy, be prepared for that. I just took a paper towel. Um, my counter was covered with all kinds of colors. It was all smeared with different colors. Um, so I just took a paper towel and some Clorox bleach and just wiped it up. So it comes up really easy if you get it wiped up right away, but um, yeah, just pre be prepared to make a mess, I guess. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is take these three primary colors and mix them to create secondary colors. So I'll be right back to show you how to do that. Okay, so I wanna make uh, the three secondary colors, which are orange, green and purple. So the way that we do that is we use this color wheel and I'm going to start with green just because it's the easiest one to do. Um, so if you look at the color wheel here it says um, to make green use equal parts of cyan and yellow. So we're going to take uh, the cyan and the yellow and we're going to mix them together and hopefully we'll get a nice green from that. Um, if you wanted it to be um, a lighter green, you would use more yellow. As you can see here, you'd use twice as much yellow as you do cyan. Um, and if you wanted it to be more of a blue green, you would use more cyan and less yellow. So I'm gonna do half and half um, and hopefully get a nice bright green and uh, we'll just see how it goes. 
Okay, I've got my colors mixed. Um, it was a messy process, but it was simple. Um, so I took my primary colors, my turquoise, my yellow, and my fuchsia, and I mixed them together to get the secondary colors. So my yellow and my fuchsia made orange, my turquoise and my yellow made green, and my turquoise and my, my fuchsia made purple. So I've got my six colors here to work with. Um, I'm gonna get the t-shirts ready to go, and um, then we'll go from there. Okay, so when you're working with the fiber reactive dyes, like the ones I'm working with, uh, you wanna use a natural fabric, cotton, linen, um, something that's all natural. If you use polyester, uh, the dye won't bond with that, won't take to it. So I'm just using 100% cotton t-shirts. Um, I got them at Joanne Fabrics. I got them on sale for $2.50 each, which is a great deal. Um, so they're 100% cotton, they're pre-shrunk. I got them in a bunch of different sizes. The first thing that you wanna do with your shirt is you wanna, you wanna wash your shirts because um, any chemicals or anything that are on them from when they were made in the factory um, are gonna affect your dye process. So I took a half a dozen shirts and I ran them through a wash. Um, since they're pre-shrunk, I used hot water. And then you need to prepare your shirts um, for the dye. So what I use is soda ash. Um, this is what you have to use before you dye your shirts. So um, it's, it's just a powder that you buy um, and you mix one cup of the soda ash powder with a gallon of warm water um, and you dissolve it. You're definitely gonna wanna use gloves because soda ash can be really hard on your skin. Um, and this is an absolutely necessary part. If you don't use the soda ash, then the dye won't bond with the fabric. So this sets up your fabric to, to take the dye and, and bond with it so that the dye doesn't wash out of your fabric. So um, you, like I said, you take one cup of soda ash and you dissolve it in a gallon of water and then you take your shirts out of the washer um, after you've run them through a wash and you put them down into the soda ash water and you let them soak for 20 minutes. So these are my shirts uh, soaking in the soda ash water. I just used a five gallon bucket from Home Depot and I put the, the two gallons of warm water and the cup of soda, or the two cups of soda ash rather, um, into the water and I dissolved it. And then I just dropped my t-shirts in there and made sure that they were fully submerged. Something to keep in mind um, when you're working with soda ash is uh, it's, like I said, it's very hard on the, on the skin. So you're gonna wanna wear rubber gloves. I'm actually gonna put on some gloves and squeeze most of the soda ash water out of these before I put them through the spin cycle on the washer just because you can reuse your soda ash water. Um, you can save it in jugs and, and reuse it. Okay, so I have my t-shirt here that's been soaked in soda ash and spun out in the washer. It's just slightly damp. Um, I've turned it inside out and the reason for this is because occasionally with dyes you'll get little specks of powder um, that haven't dissolved all the way and they'll leave little specks of color um, on the fabric. And if you have your shirt inside out, chances are very good that, that that splash of color is just gonna be on the inside and it won't come through and show on the outside of the shirt. So I've turned my, uh, my shirt inside out and I'm gonna fold it up here. Um, I'm gonna do a traditional spiral design. This is probably one of the most common tie-dye designs as far as traditional tie-dye goes and it's super easy. So I'm just gonna do that real quick and I just pinch and then you just turn. Um, and as you turn, you'll see that uh, the shirt pleats up and creates kind of a, looks like a hurricane. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do is just, uh, is just fold that up um, into a, a hurricane design. Um, and as you do this, you can um, just um, bring your pleats around um, as you're twisting. You'll see the pleats form.
the guy that I've been watching um, on on YouTube uses kite string and swears by it, so that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Um, it's not something that I've ever done before, so I'm not really sure how it's gonna go, but we'll see what happens. Okay, I have my shirt folded up and tied. I decided to spare you guys the agony of that. Um, it was my first time using kite string and it took me like four tries to do it. So, um, but it's tied up here. You can see it just kind of looks like a hurricane um, on both sides. I have taken a washable marker and I have marked out six sections. So basically like a pie, um, in six sections um, and I'm going to use each color in one of the sections so that's what I'm going to do now um, is apply the dye So after you get one side done, um, then you just turn the shirt over and do the other side. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just turn this over. And you can see where the colors are. So I'm just going to go back through and do the same colors on this side. So put some in here. Some orange. So we've got the six colors here in the spiral. Um, something that I learned online is you can take a, this is just a little cuticle pusher and you can um, kind of separate the layers and make sure that there's dye down in the shirt. And there is definitely dye down in this shirt. This shirt is saturated. The next thing that you have to do with these uh, these shirts is you have to batch them. And I'm gonna show you what that means. For batching, you just have to let the dye sit on the shirt for um, anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. 
Uh, eight hours is the minimum because you want the dye to actually set on the fabric. Um, I, when I did the kits a couple of weeks ago, I let my dyes sit for 24 hours. So I'm gonna do these for at least 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer. Um, a lot of people um, just stick their shirt into a Ziploc bag, but because this is so saturated and because the dye is gonna drip down through the shirt, um, I just went and got one of these bins um, that like fits under a bed at Walmart. And then I went to Home Depot and got a piece of wire shelving for a closet organizer. Um, and I got some PVC pipe. And I just set the, I cut the wire shelving down to fit into the bottom of the bin. And I attached the, C, the PVC pipe with a couple of zip ties just so that it sits level. Um, and I'm going to, um, I just set the shirt down in there and I'm gonna cover it and let it sit for 24 hours. So I'm gonna do some more shirts um, and I'll be back to show you what they look like all wrapped up and with the dye put into them. All right, I got six shirts done today and they are batching. So I'm just gonna show you real quick what that looks like. Uh, this is the rainbow spiral that I put together and did the video of. I did not record a video for the other shirts. I just uh, tied them up and put the dye on them. So in a couple of days, I will have a video showing you the results of those. So I've got two shirts in this bin that are batching. And I've got this long one is a shirt as well um, with a different fold design. And that's another shirt that I tied up in a scrunch design. I did try a couple of really crazy folding designs and I've not done them before. Obviously all I've done is the spirals. So we'll see how that goes. Did a couple of the little uh, masks that I got from the grocery store. Have no idea how those will come out. Should be interesting to see how those turn out. And then these two are shirts that I tied up in, in different ways and didn't have room in the bin for them. So I just wrapped them in saran wrap and those are gonna be batching as well. The most important thing when you're batching is just to keep the shirts damp. If they dry out, then the dye stops, stops working with the fabric. So we just wanna keep them damp. So I'm gonna cover these bins and tomorrow evening, I will be rinsing them out and revealing them. So I'll have a video of that uh, once that's done. Thanks so much for watching.